<laughs> All right. I'll try to go without my notes done. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Balestra. I'm a staff engineer working on developer experience at Spotify. And today I'll be talking to you about improving CI efficiency with Bazel querying and Bazel Diff. So first of all, let's talk a bit about Bazel at Spotify. We're currently trying to move all of our clients to build with Bazel. Um, the first clients to be completed are the, all of our iOS applications that can now build with Bazel. Uh, soon we should be able to also build all of our Android applications uh, with Bazel. And we also have um, C++ and TypeScript code bases that are shared between some of these applications. Uh, that we are soon uh, also going to move to, to Bazel. Uh, our goal is to move all of these repositories to a single client monorepo, which could host more than 10 million lines of code, 150,000 tests, run over one and a half million uh, CI builds every month, and receive 8,000 commits a month from uh, various hundreds of uh, engineers. So when we started thinking about this possible client monorepo, we foresaw some challenges. One of these challenges, of course, our continuous integration scale. So this is a simplified version of our dependency graph. We have Android applications, iOS applications, and a shared C++ code base, and then a desktop app we'll building for multiple platforms and also a web component that ships in there. So if we focus on one of the parts of our monorepo, such as the iOS part, we realize that we could have, as I said, tens of apps, thousands of components, uh, thousands of test targets. And so whenever a developer wants to write a new test, for example, for our full lib tests uh, target, we don't want to rebuild the whole monorepo. We don't need to build our Android code. We don't build to your, build our um, shared C++ code. Also because some of these parts of the monorepo build on multiple platforms. So we don't want to waste time checking out um, the repository on a build agent that doesn't really need to do anything. So effectively, our problem statement becomes finding which uh, Bazel targets are affected by a specific diff. And this is a question that has come up more and more on the Bazel Slack as well over the last couple of months. Uh, you know, you just don't need to do this kind of um, like finding which puzzle targets are affected by specific diff only for improving your CI efficiency, but also to kind of find out, you know, what do you need to redeploy from your monorepo or, you know, many other uh, answers that you could get. So there are various tools to um, solve this problem. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, Bazel querying that comes with Bazel. You could run a query, you could run a C query, and use functions such as RDAPs in our build files to find the set of affected targets. Uh, Benjamin in 2019 gave a very nice talk at BazelCon, and also um, someone from Pinterest, I believe, in 2020. So if you want to learn more about this approach, you can, of course, um, look at uh, these talks. And then in 2020, uh, Bazel Live was open sourced by Tinder. It kind of abstracts, abstracts away a lot, of, a lot of these issues that you would, that you would have to figure out yourself. Um, and it supports query, C query, and also the stream proto output format, which is a very efficient way to parse even gigabytes of proto messages coming from Bazel. And then in 2022, Targeted Terminator was also released. It currently only supports C query, I believe, but it's a very similar idea to Bazel Diff. So, um, you can go ahead and like experiment with these tools and kind of find out what um, what works for your use case. Um, I'll be focusing a bit more on Bazel Diff uh, in this talk because this is what we use at Spotify, but it's also what. Um, but I also believe that a lot of the things that I'll be talking about are you know tool agnostic, so some of the ideas should be reusable for um, all the other tools. So let's talk about Bazel Diff a bit. Uh, Bazel Diff supports two commands. The first one is a generate hashes command. Uh, what this does is that it generates a hash map representation for the entire Bazel uh, graph and writes it to a JSON file. In this case, starting hashes.json. So you can see the list of targets on your um, as, a, as a key, and the value is a SHA-256 that represents all the attributes um, that go into that specific target, inclu including all the inputs. So what we then do is that we change revision, so we check out our different commit, for example, we run the same exact command and uh, output the, the hash map to a final hashes.json now. Um, and we can start to see that the hash is different for the same target. And so we then run the last command available in Bazel diff, which is going to get our impacted targets. And so here we have, again, our target full lib tests that change between the two commits. Uh, the Bazel diff repo contains a great example script that you can just use and try to experiment in your repositories. So it should be really fast to see um, some, some example outputs. 
So now that we understand how we can find the impacted targets between two revisions, we can put this information to use to improve the efficiency of our continuous integration builds. So in this image, we can see that we have um, a simple continuous integration pipeline. So we could have you know, a task that builds our IS applications, another task that builds our Android applications in Linux, and then you know, even more tasks that build and run our tests on different platforms. In our Climb on repo, if we were to merge all of our repositories today, uh, today the list of tasks could be over 100. So we, of course, want to reduce this number to a minimum. So first of all, what we do whenever a developer uh, pushes a change to our repository, we run a diff task. And this runs exactly the same logic that we just uh, specified. So we can then find the impacted target in, uh, in the change submitted by our engineer. So what we then try to do is that we try to introduce a simple YAML file that defines the conditions in which subsets of our pipeline should run. What I mean by that is that, as you can see, releasable apps is, is running a query, right? So we want to run a query to find all the releasable targets in our monorepo. So in this situation, we see that we have an iOS application and an Android binary. So if in the intersection between the query um, that we have specified in our YAML file and the list of impacted targets that we got back from Bazeldiff is empty, it means that effectively it's safe to skip these tasks and we can just ignore them on CI. We continue to uh, run the second query. In this query, we're trying to look for all the IOS unit test rules um, that are in our repository. In this case, of course, we just have one target as an example, and we see that there is a valid intersection between, between the two lists. And so it means that we actually need to uh, build our tests and run them on iPhone and iPad to validate uh, the change submitted by our engineer. So as you can see, we simplified quite a bit the initial pipeline to only run the subset of tasks that are strictly necessary to validate this specific change. Also, in order to better understand and communicate to our engineers uh, what's going on in our CI, we do display this information in a GitHub check, and we also are pretty explicit on what kind of uh, CI tasks we can skip as a, as a result of this uh, system. So we call this system build, up, build avoidance, and we have seen at least a 30% re reduction in our build agent usage. This is mostly because we can uh, reduce our uh, cloud costs, but also uh, provide a faster experience to engineers who are contributed to maybe just a smaller part of our monorepo, and we don't need to rerun everything else that is uh, maybe more expensive. Uh, here are some tips after using uh, such a system for a couple of years. Uh, of course, this is a Bazel query, uh, so you can trust it for changes that happen outside your Bazel dependency graph, such as bumping your Bazel version or changing Bazel RC flags. So Bazel if comes with a really nice feature, which is called seed file paths, which accepts a list of files that if changed will invalidate the hash for your whole repo. So effectively causing everything to rerun again. Uh, Bazel Diff also has a couple of flags to customize the behavior of your query, um, so you can kind of like uh, improve the currency and performance of the query if you need to do so. And if you're interested uh, about this kind of stuff, last week we published a blog post on our uh, engineering blog where we talk about how we moved our uh, IS application to Bazel. So if that interests you, I encourage you to take a look at the blog post. And uh, yeah, please find me later for questions and uh, thank you. Yeah.